Doug Kenny here, everyone, along with Justin, and we welcome you to Stories from Motorsports. Today we have Chris and his brother from the Midnight Motorsports team. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you. Oh, not bad, not bad. Yeah, where are you at at the moment? So currently we're at, we're at my home office uh, located in Washington, central Washington. That's pretty cool. Give everybody a rundown of what your team is uh, known for. Um, well, you know, what started out as a, as just a brother, two brothers getting together and wanting to promote carding uh, has turned into quite the machine. Um, you know, we have anywhere from 15 to 25 drivers under our tent on a uh, race weekend. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not your typical team and everybody that's ever been a part of it or has joined um, has always felt that way also, right? They, it's more of a family, not necessarily a race team. So That's really cool. Who's the founder? Uh, so me and my brother, um, Chris Worley and Ricky Worley, um, we got together and uh, obviously throughout its years, it's morphed into more than what we anticipated. Everybody... I think initially when we even got in, um, we thought it'd be super cool to have a big race team and never really thought it would come to what it is now. Um, and it's, it's became quite the machine. So yeah, what, pretty uh, cool. What get, made you get into racing? Uh, it's, uh, we kind of been in it ever since we were kids. Uh, we started off in uh, motocross, um, and did a little bit there and then, uh, the family transitioned over to karting, um, and uh, back then things were a little bit different. But our our father did some uh, did some karting, and eventually we got into it when we came of age. And uh, then you know there was a little bit of car racing here and there. I didn't get to do much of that. Um, Chris did a little little circle track stuff um, here locally. Um, I was still too young at the time, but. Uh, yeah, eventually um, the circle track here shut down and I started doing some uh, some road course racing um, with a little Volkswagen Rabbit, um, but I wasn't getting enough track time. So I came back to karting. So and uh, kind of the whole thing evolved. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Fire away, Justin. All right. So. So let's see. So how many wins do you guys think you have as a team? Oh. Yeah, as a team over the past years or just this year? Um, over the past year, the year we just came out of. Uh, so I think, God, one of our drivers took a bunch of wins. Like we just went and calculated a bunch of them um, with like this last week um, kind of deal. But I'd say we were somewhere around 50-ish wins across our uh, our whole team. Um, somewhere 50, maybe a little north of 50. Pretty cool. Uh, what kind of go-karts do you guys use? Uh, so we uh, use the Race Factory brand, um, which is still fairly new. It's uh, only been out a year and a half or so. We got on board real early with... Uh, their founder, uh, Race Liberante, who's done a little bit of car racing previously. Um, I know he did some late model uh, road course racing and done a whole bunch of stuff, really. Um, but real prominent name in the karting industry. And uh, he decided to uh, start his own brand. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly the timeline, but uh, about a year and a half ago is when things started happening. And uh, we got, got in with him. It kind of just hit timing wise. We were looking for a new brand, and uh, to, after talking to them, it fit the bill, and uh, it's been really good for us. We've had a lot of growth in the last year, um, year and a half with that brand, so we're real happy with it and look forward to the future. Mm -hmm. What was the reason you guys came up with the name Midnight Motorsports? There's <laughs> not many races at midnight. <laughs> no, but there's a lot of work that ended up uh us one way or the other we were 
working till midnight. I mean, and, and when we show up to the track, not so much this year, actually, we've, we've gotten away from some of that, but, uh, when we show up to the track, everybody knows that they can head to our pit anytime before midnight and we'll probably be there doing something, whether it's assembling a new cart for a customer or trying to make sure everybody's got their ducks in a row for the race, you know, or straightening a frame until 2 a.m., right? <laughs> well, at least there's a driver driving the car, right? So, <laughs> so how many drivers do you think do help are you? Oh, man. You know, it, our club, even the region is completely different than than anywhere else in the country. Right. Uh, so we've kind of got an open pit policy. I don't care if you're driving our cart, um, if you're buying parts from us or not, you come over and we're always going to help. Um, we offer frame straightening right at the track. Someone gets in a wreck, um, not going to be able to make it into the main. Well, by themselves, drag it over. We're going to take care of you one way or the other, right? So, um, I mean, hundreds of people, by the end of the year, we end up helping one way or the other. So between Tri-Cities, we've got, we've got two home tracks and that we bounce between and try to assist as much as we can. So we've got uh, our Tri-City Cart Club here in Richland, Washington. And then we've also got Spokane that's kind of become another home to us to go and help people and, and help supply parts and knowledge and so forth. So that's really cool. So you're kind of a night hawk like team then working at night and all that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's changed over the years, you know, uh, back when we started, we were, you know, both single, no kids. Um, so we could work till all hours of the night. Uh, back then and we still pull some of those nights don't get me wrong um but you know we got families now and so they're not as often but when we started yeah we we'd be up working till carts till all hours of the night and morning sometimes um sometimes and it still happens occasionally putting a cart together last minute before a race weekend um from scratch you know so some long nights there normally um just getting ready for, for the race. Uh, so yeah, that's sometimes it, it does still call for those late nights, early mornings, <laughs> getting a couple hours of sleep before race weekend. Pretty yeah. cool. Is karting different than NASCAR with the no contact rules and all that where you're at? So karting is, uh, is generally considered, you know, kind of a non-contact sport. Contact does happen. And, you know, it's more or less if it's minor, inadvertent, like just racing, you know, that's fine. Um, but unlike NASCAR, where you can kind of move people and lean on them a little more, that's a little more frowned upon um, in karting. And, and kind of because it's open wheel effectively, like there is some body work that helps cover up the wheels but they're still mostly open so it's very easy to uh to lock tires and carts start going in the air and stuff so you have to respect it um you know just to minimize flips and incidents and stuff like that yeah definitely that's what one driver learned the hard way last <laughs> year when he got a 15 year suspension i think if you heard about that. Oh, yeah. So, you, you have any questions, Justin? Yep. So, do you guys think uh, you guys are, like, one of the, uh, like, best teams out there to come and help? I mean, good people say thank you for your help. This was really helpful if you're working with someone new. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, the relationships we've built throughout the years um, with multiple people has kind of helped bring a lot of that in. Right. Um, there's a lot of times where people are going to come to our pit, just ask questions, um, you know, handling or uh, if we see something even on the track or how it's being scaled coming off the track. It's like, hey, have you done this lately? 
and that's they're like no you know we should, haven't done the lineman or we haven't checked to see if it bent and i was like bring it over it's really bad um when it comes down to it it's really about the kids for us we really enjoy working with the uh, junior ones and the uh, junior twos and try to be um as helpful as possible right especially with new people coming in these guys don't know the ins and out of what needs to happen on a cart um so as much knowledge as we can give them the better right yeah definitely that's great to hear if people want to have your guys's help and they're not in your area how do they get a hold of you uh, so facebook really is about the best way um that actually goes to three different people uh me myself and ricky or uh, me and ricky and um we have another guy that's that's really stepped up he wasn't able to make it he's uh picking up some trophies for a uh, uh, banquet we have tomorrow but uh anyway will has helped out a lot in the last couple of years and and he helps um with messaging or or anybody that needs any info, he also does it. So between Ricky and I, most of the time we're working, sometimes one of us is going to be available. Pretty well, cool. I, I can truly say you guys have been available anytime I need to get a hold of you or right. anything. So. Yep. And you guys are in Spokane, Washington, as you say, is one of your homes. That's where Tom Sneeb is from, if you guys didn't know. Oh. The 1983 Indy 500 champion. Have oh. any of your go-carters uh, grown on to become successful? Uh, not for us. You know, I don't think we've necessarily been, um, been going long enough to potentially even see any of that. And... You know, I guess a lot of our our uh, drivers under our tent that have that have gone on and done more stuff, they're more grassroots level. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Generally, you got to have quite the budget or know know some individuals that have some budget. And uh, a lot of a lot of people we work with are your you know more everyday kind of um, you know everyday families that uh, just want to go racing or get their kids racing kind of deal. And they might have aspirations, but, um, you know, at some point they'll have to get some help along the way to, because, you know, you, you don't get anywhere without money. Yeah, definitely. Have any other questions, Justin? I do. It's actually funny, Michael. Are we your first interview on the uh, scores from movie sports like this? Yep. Yep. First, uh, first interview we've done like this. Um, we've done periodic ones, meeting with um, chassis manufacturers, stuff like that. When we were looking, um, and we've done a couple others with some vendors, but but for the most part, first review that we've ever had. Yeah. Great to hear. Do you all enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been a pleasure working with you guys. I'm glad we were able to finally get uh, get it all nailed out and get on here with you guys so yeah definitely we'll bring you back on in the future as we continue growing if you're interested of course of course i wouldn't mind uh at a certain point maybe getting our some of our drivers on especially the younger ones you know the more we can get them on um and out there the better better they'll chance they'll have it continuing to go further definitely yeah. that'd be great so everyone we thank them for appearing on the show, and we'll see you next week for the next episode of Stories from Motorsports.